Hello everyone and welcome to Med Twins. In this video we will talk about antibiotics. There are several classes of antibiotics out there and that's why in this video we will focus on specific classes of antibiotics with some examples. For a more detailed look into each class, uh, wait for our future videos. Also keep in mind that because of bacterial resistance, new antibiotics are constantly being made. To start off, let's define what is an antibiotic. Antibiotics are a class of drugs that destroy or inhibit growth of bacteria. They do not work against viruses. The antibiotics that we will focus on in this video are the ones that affect the cell wall synthesis, affect protein synthesis, affect nucleic acid synthesis, interferes with metabolic pathways, and affects the cytoplasmatic membrane. When it comes to the cell wall, because human cells do not have a cell wall, these antibiotics do not directly harm human cells. The bacterial cell walls can be gram-positive or gram-negative, which have different cell, cell wall structures. Therefore, different antibiotics must be used. An important antibiotic that works by inhibiting cell wall synthesis is penicillin, which is a beta-lactam antibiotic. These antibiotics work by binding to the penicillin binding protein, which blocks transpeptidase, a cross-linking of peptidoglycan on the cell wall. Thus, it inhibits the formation of a cell wall. Because bacterial ribosomes have 30S and 50S subunits, there are antibiotics that fo focus on each individual subunit. Therefore, I will focus this section of the video into two parts, one of them talking about the 30S inhibitors and another one talking about the 50S inhibitors. Of the 30S subunit inhibitors, there are aminoglycosides which work by irreversibly inhibiting the, the initiation complex and blocking translocation. These antibiotics require oxygen, so they're ineffective against anaerobic bacteria. Some examples of aminoglycosides include neomycin and streptomycin, and these are bactericidal. Another example of 30S subunit inhibitors are tetracyclines which work by binding to the 30S subunit and preventing attachment of amino acyl tRNA. Therefore, it inhibits protein synthesis. Some examples of drugs in this class include, include tetracycline and doxycycline. These are bacteriostatic. When it comes to the 50S subunit inhibitors, we have macrolides which work by stopping protein synthesis by inhibiting translocation through binding to the 50S subunit. Examples include erythromycin and clarithromycin. Another example includes chloramphenicol, which inhibits peptidiotransferase at the 50S subunit of the ribosome. Another 50S inhibitor is clindamycin, which inhibits peptide transfer at the 50S subunit. The last 50S subunit antibiotic we'll be talking about in this video is linezolid, which binds to the 50S subunit and prevents the formation of the initiation complex. Next, let's talk about nucleic acid synthesis. This includes the quinolones, which inhibits DNA gyrase and tropoisomerases. Therefore, inhibits DNA replication. Two examples include ofloxacin and ciprofloxacin. Another example of an antibiotic that affects the nucleic acid synthesis is rifamycins. These inhibit DNA-dependent RNA polymerase, so it blocks mRNA synthesis. Examples include rifabutin and rifampin.
Now let's talk about antibiotics that interfere with metabolic pathways. Let's talk about sulfonamides, which stop folate synthesis by inhibiting dihydropteroate synthase. Folate is an important part of DNA synthesis and protein synthesis. Sulfonamides have the same mode of action as tapsone. Another antibiotic that interferes with metabolic pathways is tri trimetropin, which prevents bacterial folate synthesis by inhibiting bacterial dihydrofolate reductase. This prevents the formation of tetrahydrofolic acid. These antibiotics have a higher affinity for bacterial enzymes instead of human enzymes. At last, let's talk about antibiotics that affect the cytoplasmic membrane. These include polymyxins, which work as a detergent by disrupting the cell membrane integrity. And also daptomycin, which is a lipopolypeptide that disrupts the cell membrane by creating transmembrane channels. Thank you very much for watching. Keep in mind that there are several other antibiotics that we did not explore or mention in this video, and we will hopefully mention them in future videos. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you.